So who knows what we're reading about today? Well, there is this man that lived a long time ago, and he had this idea, and it was the best idea ever. But for some reason, people didn't like it too well. But he had this idea that people should, like, all get along and be treated the same, no matter how they look or where they live or what they do. And I think it was a really good idea. So we're going to talk today about the, the goodness of being different and how we're all glad that we're different and we can all get along and, and be good. Well, I realize the whole history lesson's a little bit much. So we, we do have, who knows Little Bill? You know Little Bill? You know, watch Little Bill? I like Little Bill. And who is Alice the Great? Isn't that his grandmother or great-grandmother? Well, we're going to read, get the lights for me. We're going to read our first story today, and it's oh, and called it Thank, Thank You, Dr. King. It is actually written by Robin Reed. One day, little Bill come home from school with something exciting to show Alice the Great. No peeking, he told her. I can't wait to see what it is, little Bill, said Alice the Great. Ta-da, said little Bill. It's a friendship flower we made for Dr. Martin Luther King Day. I've never seen anything like it, Alice the Great exclaimed. It's beautiful. Miss Murray helped us, he told her. She said her flowers are to thank Dr. King for making sure that everybody can go to school together and play together and grow together. Well, guess what, little Bill, said Alice the Great. I'm making something to honor Dr. King, too. It's a scrapbook about all his life. If you help me, we can surprise everyone before dinner. I'll help you, said little Bill. I knew I could count on my super helper, said Alice the Great. You can finish taping these pictures into the book. This book will help us remember Dr. King's important dream. What was his dream, asked little Bill. Dr. King had a dream that we could all work together to make this world a better place, said Alice the Great. Well, how can we do that, he wondered. Well, she answered, Dr. King thought that we should try to solve our problems without fighting with each other. Well, I can try to do that, said little Bill. He thought about his friends at school. Maybe instead of fighting over toys, and see what he's doing in the picture? I can share and take turns. Dr. King also thought that we should take time to help one another, said Alice the Great. I can do that too, said Little Bill. Little Bill thought about his best friend, Andrew. When Andrew has to give Farfy a bath, he says, I can help him. And Dr. King believed that we should try to love one another, even though we look different from one another, said Alice the Great. Do you know what that means? I think so, said Bill. Little Bill thought about all the people he knew. Well, I love all kinds of people and animals too. The scrapbook was almost finished. Look, Alice the Great, this page is empty. What shall we put here? Alice the Great looked around. Oh my, I am all out of pictures. Little Bill thought for a minute. I know what we should do. We can put my friendship flower right here, said little Bill. Then everybody can see it and remember to thank Dr. King. Alice the Great smiled. It's perfect. And I have something to add too, little Bill. With all your great ideas, I know you will help Dr. King's dream come home too. Come true too. Alice the Great gave Little Bill a big hug. Thank you, Super Helper. Little Bill hugged her back. You're welcome, Alice the Great. This book is called It's Okay to Be Different. And it's written by Todd Parr. It's okay to be missing a tooth or two or three. It's okay to need some help. There's lady needs help go across in the street and she's got a dog to help. It's okay to have a different nose. Think of the elephant's nose. It's okay to be a different color. It's okay to have no hair. 
It's okay to have big ears. It's okay to have wheels. It's okay to be small, medium, large, or extra large. It's okay to wear glasses. It's okay to talk about your feelings. It's okay to eat macaroni and cheese in the bathtub. Well, I don't know about that one either. It's okay to say no to bad things. It's okay to come from a different place. It's okay to be embarrassed. Sometimes we get embarrassed. It's okay to come in last. The turtle, but the turtle's finishing. It's okay to dance by yourself. It's okay to have a pet worm. See the worm in the in his box? It's okay to be proud of yourself. It's okay to have different moms. It's okay to have different dads. It's okay to be adopted. It's okay to have an invisible friend. It's okay to do something nice for someone. It's okay to lose your mittens. It's okay to get mad, but not too mad. It's okay to do something nice for yourself. Look at that ice cream cone. It's okay to help a squirrel collect nuts. It's okay to have different kinds of friends. It's okay to make a wish. What's the dog wishing for? A bone, that's right. It's okay to be different. You are special and important just because of being who you are. Love, Todd. Does anybody here look the same as anybody else? Find I, someone that looks exactly like you. Find someone that looks just like you. I don't think there is anybody just like you. That's because we are all created special just to be each one ourselves, right? Some of us have dark hair. Some of us have light hair. Some of us are boys and some of us are girls. So I'm going to read a book. It's named, it's an, entitled, Whoever You Are, and it's written by Mem Fox and illustrated by Leslie Staub. So let's see what they have to say about whoever you are. Little one, whoever you are, wherever you are, there are little ones just like you all over the world. Their skin may be different from yours, and their homes may be different from yours. See the different color of their skin and their houses? Their schools may be different than yours. You see, they're holding their school books. Those look like school books to you? Not to me, but those are their school books. And their lands may be different from yours. They're riding a donkey, and it looks like there's llamas in the front there. Their lives may be different from yours, and their words may be very different from yours. Do you think you can understand Chinese? Could you understand Chinese? I don't think I could, but I bet a Chinese little boy or girl could, right? But inside, their hearts are just like yours. Whoever they are, wherever they are, all over the world. Their smiles are like yours, and they laugh just like you. Their hurts are like yours, and they cry like you, too. Whoever they are, wherever they are, all over the world. Little one, when you are older and when you are grown, you may be different. 
and they may be different. Wherever you are, wherever you are, they are in this big wide world. But remember this, joys are the same and love is the same. Pain is the same. Do you see the boo-boo? Pain is the same and the blood is the same. Smiles are the same and hearts are just the same. Wherever they are, wherever you are, wherever we are, all over the world. The end. Okay, here's a very interesting story. It's called The Crayon Box That Talked. And while Miss Mary is trying to find it, who can tell me, is there only one color in the crayon box? No, there's lots of colors in the crayon box, right? But they're all in the same box. You know when you pick up your toys at night and you put your crayons, all the different colors of crayons go in one box, right? Well, we're going to read a story here right now. It's called The Crayon Box That Talked, and it's by Shane DeRolf. While walking in a toy store the day before today, I overheard a crayon box with many things to say. I don't like red, said yellow, and greed said, nor do I. And no one here likes orange, but no one knows just why. We're a box of crayons that doesn't get along, said blue to all the others, something here is wrong. Well, I bought that box of crayons and took it home with me and laid out all the colors so the crayons could all see. They watched me as I colored with red and blue and green and black and white and orange and every color in between. They watched as green became the grass and blue became the sky and yellow sun was shining bright on white clouds drifting by. Colors changing as they touched, becoming something new. They watched me as I colored. They watched till I was through. And when I'd finally finished, I began to walk away. And as I did, the crayon box had something more to say. I do like red, said yellow, and green said, so do I. And Blue, you were terrific, so high up in the sky. We are a box of crayons, each one of us unique. But when we get together, the picture is complete. Do you see that? All of those colors were different, but when they got together, what did they make? A beautiful picture. There are certain animals that like to change. And one of those is a chameleon. Now, if everybody listens really good, sometime when we enter before this story's over, Miss Mary is actually going to hold the chameleon. And we won't get into that right now. Okay, realize chameleons change colors, not quite as vibrant as in the book. But yes, we do have a live chameleon in here. And his name is, her name is Karma. And for some of you older ones that may, okay, okay, we got you there. Okay. So this book is called Chameleon's Colors. Chameleon was always changing colors. No matter where he went, his skin would change from brown to green, from green to yellow, all to match his surroundings. Sometimes even his best friends would walk right past without seeing him. Well, they would think he was a, a piece of wood, a leaf, a flower, or a stone. Oops, I'm sorry, Chameleon Hippo almost stepped on him. I didn't see you, I know, said Chameleon. No one ever sees me, and I'm sick of it. I think it'd be fun to change colors, said Hippo. What? Chameleon was surprised. So day after day, I'm the same old muddy gray, Hippo exclaimed. I wish I could be a different color. Well, if that's what you really want, said Chameleon. He grabbed some pink blossoms, stomped on them, splashed the juice all over Hippo. That's fabulous, said Hippo. Now I am pink like you. Chameleon smiled. He had a great idea. That night, Chameleon stayed up late collecting flowers and fruits and leaves. He squeezed out all the juices and he mixed them in coconut shells. He could not wait for the morning. 
Chameleon colors, bear or flea, tell me what color you want to be. Chameleon sang as loudly as he could. The wind carried his voice throughout the jungle and soon the animals began to arrive. What would you like, called Chameleon? Choose your style, polka dot striped, checkered flowered, any pattern under the sun. What a great idea, Chameleon, said the animals. They all went home, colorful and happy. Chameleon was happy too. He had become the most popular animal in the jungle. Look at all the colors. Have you ever seen such colorful jungle animals? But the next day, lions started complaining. These colors are a big mistake. I'm hungry and I can't even tell the difference between a zebra and a hippo. How am I supposed to recognize my dinner? Lion is right, his snake. I can't hide the grass anymore. I can see bright red skin a mile away. Soon, all the other animals were complaining too. Life was so much easier with their old colors. Now everything's all messed up and it's your fault, chameleon. Change us back. They rushed at him angrily. <gasps> they chased him to the edge of a cliff. Trembling, chameleon closed his eyes. He turned to call the rocks and he waited. Suddenly, a clap of thunder roared through the sky and huge sheets of rain poured down, washing the colors off all the animals. Chameleon breathed a sigh of relief. When the sun came out of the jungle, it was back to normal. The, st the stripes were on the zebras instead of the lion, and the chameleon was back to normal too, changing from brown to green to yellow, all to match his surroundings. You will turn the lights on. And this is actually a what is known as a veiled chameleon. And I'm not Jack Hanna or anybody like that. I, I don't. I, I. It's it's a weird little lizard. He eats bugs. He doesn't change the the extreme colors yet. But when he gets older, he will take on pinks and yellows. You can actually purchase this lovely pet for your child on Main Street Clayton at Scales and Tails and More. They eat um, lizards. His tongue would pretty much reach about from me to uh, Rachel. Raise your arm, Rachel. His tongue is like really, really long. And he changes colors to meet his surroundings. But we don't change color. Well, we might get out in the sun too much and get a little red or something. We might get sick and get a little pale. But we don't change colors. We are glad with the color we are made. We are glad that we have different color hair, different color eyes, and we are all such different children. And we give thanks for that. So, remember when you hear people talk about Martin Luther King, that he was a man that wanted everybody to be proud of the color and the skin they were in and everybody to get along. No, he actually won't bite you unless you look a whole lot like a cricket or a mealworm. Here, give him the eye there. Do not let him jump on me. No, but if his tongue reached out and grabbed your um, camera lens, you'd really think he was cute. He, he won't stick his tongue out unless there's a cricket in front of him, and none of y'all look like crickets or mealworms. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Martin's Big Words, The Life of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. by Dorian Rappaport, illustrated by Brian Collier. Everywhere in Martin's hometown, he saw the signs, white only. His mother said these signs were in all southern cities and towns in the United States. Every time Martin read the words, he felt bad until he remembered what his mother told him. You are as good as anyone. In church, Martin sang hymns. He read from the Bible. He listened to his father preach. These words made him feel good. When I grow up, I'm going to get big words too. Martin grew up. He became a minister like his father, and he used the big words he had heard as a child from his parents and from the Bible. Everyone can be great. He studied the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi. He learned how the Indian nation won freedom without ever firing a gun. Martin said, love, when others said, hate. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. He said, together, when others said, separate. He said, peace, when others said, war. Sooner or later, all the people of the world will have to discover a way to live together. 
In 1955, on a cold December day in Montgomery, Alabama, Rosa Parks was going home from work. A white man told her to get up from her seat on the bus so he could sit. She said no and was arrested. Montgomery's black citizens learned of her arrest. It made them angry. They decided not to ride the buses until they could sit anywhere they wanted. For 381 days, they walked to work and school and church. They walked in rain and cold and in blistering heat. Martin walked with them and talked with them and sang with them and prayed with them until the white city leaders had to agree that they could sit anywhere they wanted. When the history books are written, someone will say, there lived black people who had the courage to stand up for their rights. In the next 10 years, black Americans all over the South protested for equal rights. Martin walked with them and talked with them and sang with them and prayed with them. White ministers told them to stop. Mayors and governors and police chiefs and judges ordered them to stop, but they kept on marching. Wait! For years I've heard the word wait. We have waited more than 340 years for our rights. They were jailed and beaten and murdered, but they kept on marching. Some black Americans wanted to fight back with their fist. Martin convinced them not to, but reminding them of the power of love. Love is the key to the problems of the world. Many white Southerners hated and feared Martin's words. A few threatened to kill him and his family. His house was bombed, his brother's house was bombed, but he refused to stop. Remember, if I am stopped, this movement will not be stopped because God is with this movement. The marches continued. More and more Americans listened to Martin's words. He shared his dreams and filled them with hope. I have a dream that one day in Alabama, little black boys and little black girls will join hands with the little white boys and little white girls as sisters and brothers. After 10 years of protest, the lawmakers in Washington voted to end segregation. The whites only sign in the South came down. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. cared about all Americans. He cared about people all over the world and people all over the world admired him. In 1964, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. He won it because he taught others to fight with words, not fists. Martin went wherever people needed help. In April of 1968, he went to Memphis, Tennessee. He went to help garbage collectors who were on strike. He walked with them and talked with them and sang with them and prayed with them. On the second day there, he was shot. He died. His big words are alive for us today. Freedom, peace, together, love. I have a dream.